This video, we will cover the main differences between previous versions of Romexis and Romexis 6. So this is primarily for Plan Mecca customers who have recently upgraded to Romexis 6 to kind of go over some of those differences to help you reorient yourself uh, in this software. So the first thing that comes up when you open up Romexis is your patient list, just like with previous versions. But now if you single click on any of your patients, it's gonna show you tiny thumbnails of all of the images for that particular patient. So it's gonna go over 2D, 3D volumes, and it shows you the type of image right here in the corner. It'll show you if it's a 2D image, if it's a 3D volume, or if it's a screenshot uh, with the little camera of a CBCT. If you double click on that patient, it's gonna open up all of the images for you uh, in that patient chart. There's three different ways right here, if you can see my mouse, there's three different ways to view the same data. So this first one is going to give you a list of all of your images, show you the type of image it is, the exposure date, and then if you have any comments that you've typed in in your, uh, in your preferences. Um, it, it's also going to kind of scroll like a carousel wheel as I move from one image to the next to show me the thumbnail of that. This next method of sorting your images is going to sort by type. So here's all of my intraoral images, screenshots of CBCTs, and then finally all of my 3D volumes. And this last way to look at them uh, is by date. So you can also sort by date acquired. Over to the right, we have 2D, 3D, CAD CAM, Smile Design. This just shows me how many images of each type there are. And I can sort by just if I wanted to look at all of my 2D images or just if I wanted to look at 3D images. Um, just to, again, another way to quickly sort sort uh, and see what you have in each patient chart. Uh, for capturing images, right at the top here under 2D, it says pan exposure. This is how you take a pan or extra oral bite wings or an extra oral uh, PA. And then under 3D, we have the little skull that says 3D capture. This is gonna capture your CBCTs, uh, or even if you're capturing a CBCT of a denture or a model or something like that to convert into an STL, we're still just gonna select 3D capture. So we have 2D pan exposure and 3D capture. Up on the top of my screen, this is also where I can import images. So if a pan was sent to me from a different doctor or I got a disc from, um, from a specialist or an imaging center or something like that, I can import the 2D import or the 3D import right here. All right, um, once I, if I want to exit out of this patient, same as other versions of, of Romexis, we have my patient name in the top right-hand corner right here with a tiny little X next to it that'll allow me to exit out of this patient and select a different patient. Um, speaking of up top here, I want to point out this tiny little icon that looks like the YouTube icon with a little play button in the box. This will launch all of my Plan Mecca Romexis videos from Plan Mecca Corporate. So they've broken down all of these videos into general 2D, 3D, but this goes through, you know, how to create a patient, how to change the tooth numbering system, uh, how to segment a pan, how to import images, how to crop, things things like that. So all of our Romexis tutorials from Plan Mecca are in your top right hand corner, right within your 3D software, right within your Romexis software. This little icon will, will launch all of your videos. All right. Um, another thing that you may want to change are all of your um, all of your default settings. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a patient and open up a CBCT right here. All right. So 
all of the icons in Rome Access, you can get rid of some of them if you don't want them. So in my software right now, I have every single icon turned on so I can properly demo um, and train. But if you don't use all of these, then you don't need to keep them all on. In Rome Access 6, by right clicking, you can customize your toolbar and you can hide any of these, any of these icons. So if you, for example, um, I can right click. If you are never adding text with an arrow or you don't need two different boxes, you can have add text and draw arrow. If I select, it gets rid of it. So I can get rid of some of these to kind of declutter my, uh, my, my Rome Access screen. The next thing I wanna point out is right here, my default settings. This tiny little wrench up on the top is gonna to open up, launch all of my default settings. So under general, um, I typically move this top scroll bar all the way to the left. This is my contrast. So this is gonna give me as much contrast in all of my images as possible and really expand that grayscale so I can um, get a lot of contrast in all of my images. You can see how it, how it manipulates the image in the background. So make sure that that's set all the way to the left. And then if you like, um, this is your, brightness, lighter or darker. And then this bottom one is your sharpening tool. So if you tend to like your images a little sharper when they come in and you always are moving this bottom bar to the right, you can set it in your default settings for all of your images to come in looking a little crisper, um, a little more sharpened. That way you don't have to do it to each and every image. Um, other things that I like to change is in the implant tab, this right here, your cross sections, this shows your default cross sections. So how many slices you have, as well as how far apart they are and how wide they are. So if I go to my implant tab, this is showing that I have five cross sectional windows and each of my five windows are, are three millimeters from the one in front of it. And I did that by selecting on my default settings and I have each of my cross sections set to three millimeters. This window is how wide each window is. So if you take a look at in the background, it can be really wide or it can be narrower. I typically let, like to set this um, in like the high 30s in the high 30 range that way it gives you enough width in each of your windows to see the entire arch um, for implant planning and also seeing the width of the sinus uh, from axillary implants but again that's just a preference but i typically like to set my defaults around three millimeters for cross section and in the high 30s for the width um, if you're an endodontist for example and you want your slices closer together because you don't need to see the width of of um, an entire implant site, you just really want to see the width of one tooth, you can set this even narrower, um, maybe at, at one millimeter or something like that. Uh, this is also where you can deselect or get rid of some of your lines. So if you're looking at your screen and you're saying, whoa, this looks really, really busy, there's lines all over the place and it's really kind of confusing me how many lines there are. This is where I can get rid of some of those. So I typically turn off my panoramic autofocus line as well as my autofocus layers. Um, but you can go as far as to turn off your panoramic contour if you don't wanna see the, the, the contour line. Um, or you, know, you can kind of play with turning these on and off to see, to clean up that image. All right. The other main, um, the other difference between previous versions of Romexis and Romexis 6 is the ability to have two things on your screen at the same time. So I can have an intraoral image or a screenshot on the screen at the same time that I'm looking at a patient's 3D volume. Um, so for example, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a 3D case that I have here uh, for a patient. Let's see, here's a molar, a molar case. Okay, 
So right now I'm in the patient's 3D chart. You can see it on the left-hand side, 3D is highlighted. That's because I'm looking at their 3D volume. If I go to file, it's gonna show me all of the patient's images, okay? And I can open up their 2D case here, okay? Um, I can also, select anything from down here. So let's say, yeah. Okay, so once I have my intraoral image that I want to see at the same time that I'm looking at the patient's 3D, if I double click on it, it gives, it pops it out of my screen and gives me a, a, a different window. And now on the left-hand side, I can go back to the patient's 3D. And now you can see here is that patient's intraoral image from a sensor and the CBCT in the background. Okay. Um, in speaking to different views um, and windows that Romexa 6 has, we now have the ability to make any one of these cross sections full screen and minimize the others without losing sight of them. So if I wanted to look at this axial window larger, just by clicking on this corner maximize, I can maximize this view and it's not gonna get rid of the other views, but it is going to minimize them on the right hand side of the screen. And I can do that with the coronal view or the sagittal view, and it's just gonna make them sm the others smaller on the side. If I wanna go back home, I can maximize and then minimize, and it brings me back to my four windows. Okay. All right. Hopefully that helped uh, orient you a little bit um, to some of the changes in Romexa 6. Thank you.